Let's say you just started getting into programming and coding and are interested in learning to get started uh, building websites, iPhone apps, Android apps, whatever it may be. You start Googling and there's a million billion different results. There's a ton of different languages, coding languages, and it's overwhelming. You don't know where to start. So that's what I want to go over today. Um, I get a lot of questions about how I personally got started coding and how other people should get started uh, building things. Um, so me personally, I got really interested in coding in college, took a computer science class, and hated it. Uh, that's because it went over data structures, stuff that I couldn't really relate to what the end result that I wanted. Um, so after that, I had a, took a couple year hiatus from coding, and then got interested and started building small, very basic websites, again, uh, through tutorials and online. But I was jumping all over the place. I was jumping from language to language, uh, project to project, because I didn't know what would give me the best leverage to learn in the long term. So then after that, I went to Full Stack Academy Coding Boot Camp in New York City. And since then, I've been working on a couple startups and freelance for myself on all types of projects from websites, e-commerce sites, iPhone apps, Android apps. Uh, I've done it all. So when I get the question of what should you start learning if you know nothing about coding at all? So first thing I say is go search HTML, CSS, and build a website from scratch. And I don't mean go copy and paste a template and put it up online and host it and there you go, there's your website. I mean build it from scratch. Uh, and Because that's the only way you're going to learn how to code. You want to build things and break them really fast. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but I personally believe that's the best way to learn is have an idea of what you want to build, start building it and then learn along the way and break a bunch of shit along the way. Uh, and that's usually how I learn new languages, new pro, uh, new projects. I just start building and then I know a new skill at the end of that project. So I taught myself how to build a couple iPhone apps, Android apps, and now I have a couple clients building them. So. Um, it really depends on what you want to do. So you have to figure out what your end goal is. Do you just want to build a website? Well then just do HTML, CSS, uh, maybe some bootstrap. If you want to learn how to build an iPhone app, I would probably suggest starting in the same spot. Start small and then work up your way up to an iPhone app because you're not going to be able to just jump right into coding in Swift or React Native, which is what I do. Um, so first things first, start researching HTML, CSS, and just build like a personal website, uh, a picture with about, a little bit about you, buy a domain, uh, set it up on GitHub pages, and it's all for free. And once you do that, you could take little steps to build bigger and bigger things. Um, so first off, number one, learn HTML, CSS, uh, Git. And I actually have a website that I do an intro class or intro level project just like this on codeshit.org. Uh, so I have two different lessons. I have one on how to build a website and I go over HTML and CSS and Git and all the very basics you need uh, to build a great foundation to build other things. And then after that, once you build that website, we go over React Native and we build an iPhone app. So that being said, after you build this website, um, you want to get more into actual programming languages. HTML, CSS uh, really aren't considered a programming language. Uh, it's kind of it's the backbone of the entire internet. Uh, HTML provides the structure. CSS provides the styling, and you could even throw in some JavaScript in there for say Google Analytics, tracking tags, uh, animations, and such. Um, but once you get past that, the two languages I use the most are JavaScript and Ruby. And you could throw Python in there. Uh, I put those three together because they're all functioning programming languages. And they're a little more high level. You don't need to um, worry about storage or memory leaks like you would C, 
she, she, C sharp or uh, C programming languages or Objective C or Java or anything like that. Um, so I would start with JavaScript, Ruby, or Python to get started in actual functioning programming languages. Um, and if you want to learn build iPhone apps, you can learn Swift. But what I've done is uh, I know my work, the clients I get, is going to be mostly JavaScript or websites. So I focus on learning React Native instead, and that's a JavaScript framework based on React. And why did I do that? I did that because I could use React and the same basic structure to build a website as I could an iPhone app and I, as I could an Android app. So you could use React all over. Um, you could call me a React fanboy, but I've used it on a ton of projects and I haven't really had any complaints so far um, other than it updating all the time, but you have a problem with a lot of programming in general because it's always improving, always updating. Um, and then the next one I would suggest looking into is Ruby on Rails. Uh, Ruby is the programming language and Rails is the framework in which Ruby is m used a lot of the time. I wouldn't say most of the time, but a lot of the time. Uh, my first job out of coding bootcamp was involved using Ruby on Rails full time um, and that alongside JavaScript. So those two languages is what I use for most of my projects. Um, and I think it's a great starting point and it depends on what you want. Uh, like I said, figure out what the end goal is and then you can determine what programming language or route you should take from there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, I'll try and answer as many as I can. And if you want to get started with programming, I have my own course, codeshit.org, like I said earlier. Uh, check it out.